Week eight is mostly in the books. Maybe you know if you won or if you lost, you want to catch up with this week's action. We've got all the great players, all the stinkers, and, and you can also see how um, my heart and my life in fantasy football has imploded, and you should watch this episode because it could very well be my last. Hey, this is Kenyon Drake. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in to the show once again. Monday, October 28th. The fantasy footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason, back with you. On the heels of yet another Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Sunday evening of NFL football. We have Halloween just around the corner. I have decided I am going to dress up as myself. Because I will be back from the dead by then. (laughs) And I will uh, be be a scary monster, ghoul. Uh, you're dead on the inside presently. Yeah, I have no soul or strength to be here with you, gentlemen. I hate... Thanks for fighting through. Thank you. I it, This takes a lot of effort. Sometimes we go through hard times, Jason. Fantasy football is a cruel, cruel animal. Uh, it's, it's, uh, look, everyone gets a bad beat sometimes. We've all been there. You've all... What about all the time? No, that's just reserved for me, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> that's just reserved for me. Uh, update on the league of record: I went uh, nuclear and scored 157 and a half points, which is usually going to be the highest score of the week. Except once again, my opponent. Uh, it, well, he's setting records over there with 181 <laughs> and a half points. I got blown out. Like that's the th- I didn't even lose a close game. <laughs> what is happening? So now my awesome league and record team will go to three and five, and I'm pretty sure my five losses have like an average margin of like the opponent scoring about 150. I we sent some people to your house a well check last night mm. after um, you know you faced a, a, a torturous opponent, you know Jamal Williams and Tyrell Williams and oh, Gardner Minshew and, and Tevin Coleman. Yeah, I mean honestly, the 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 opponent that I was facing is like one of the three worst teams in the league everybody beats him he's got a crappy roster he, until you play until me until it's not crappy now, i've got to work on my defense couple things true couple things yeah your defense sucks <laughs> it really does i'm giving up points like your intimidation factor is not there nobody's afraid of you yeah apparently not not even jamal williams but uh we have a lot to get into today all the studs the stinkers brooks is back with Woo! us oh yeah. hey there's good Judge news. Judge Giamatti is back. It's good to be back. Yeah, 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 as they say. Now, Mike, I am curious, before we get into some Monday, Punday reaction to the weekend, before we get into the studs, the duds, how do you feel when you witness something like that happen to your, you know, last week's best friend, Jason? Mm, yes. Like, when you watch what's happening, do you... Are you really rooting for him or against him Oof, or for, that's, that's for the entertainment one. of the show? Man. Uh, Let's get real. <laughs> I think I root ag- against it at this point. The, the, man, the man is... Wait, you, you root enough. against it happening to him? Yeah. I was, look, I was there live. One more the, knife twist is not... You're not in the We're watching the games, that. and he is, we were watching his team just... Go ham. Oh, Jared it Goff, was, Christian McCaffrey, Mike Evans. Yeah, he had Evans. He had Mike loser, Evans. Loser, loser, loser. He had Evans yesterday and somehow lost, and it was – things started unraveling after Tyrell Williams went a full half with zero fantasy points, and then all of a sudden he just kind of popped his head up. It was like, no, I'm still here, and then proceeded to have himself a fine he, game, and then the dominoes just kept falling. Do you remember falling. last week – when you tweet, when you were uh, were were talking about the tweet from Scott Barrett of like, what if you had this crappy team and they would have scored? So- <laughs> I mean, this- yes. you might be the only person that's lost on both Mike Evans' forty-point weeks. B- Mike Evans, Christian McCaffrey combo, yeah. both monster yeah. weeks. All right, we 
we'll move on. We uh, hopped on social media as we do each and every Sunday. We asked you for some sophisticated reactions to the weekend. Mm. Some one-liners. Lie Johnson. <laughs> oh, yes. Or maybe Ty Johnson. That's not worth all that fab. Mm-mm. Chase Deadman. Oh, come on. He got hurt. Kenny still not relevant. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Kenny kills my fantasy team. Yes. Kenny chills. Uh-huh. Tevin swole man. Whoa. Stairway to Tevin. Kiki cut me. Oh, oh, that's for sure. Yeah. Latavius money. <laughs> what? That is not an authorized reappropriation. Uh, someone needs to redeem that soundbite. <laughs> and Latavius true. money did that. And then uh, a nickname I think Al Borland put in here, Jason Moore's dead inside. Jason's more dead inside. Oh, Jason's more dead inside. Which is a fact. Just can you way. be more dead? Uh-huh. I can confirm that I can. Yes, Mike, <laughs> we have verified it is possible. But wait till next it's, week. It's pretty binary. We've got injury news to get into. We encourage you to follow us on the socials. You can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell, get updates when new content goes out there. Mike is live every Sunday morning. Don't want to miss that. Nope. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers and the website's the fantasy footballers.com. Let's hit the rewind. Weekly rewind. The NFL trade deadline is Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. We got some breaking news this morning. It's hot. The trades are they're they're happening. Coming, yeah. It's kind of yucky. What? This, this specific trade? This specific trade. Oh, is, the no, one that I, we're going to talk about yes, in a minute the, I lo- with, with I love, that player? I love trades that are happening now in the modern NFL, but this one, I think, for fantasy kind of stinks. The Cardinals. Arizona Cardinals trading a 2026 round pick that could become a fifth to the Miami Dolphins in exchange for running back Kenyon Drake, who was on the out and out for quite some time. Drake's in the last year of his contract. The Cardinals pick up Kenyon Drake. David Johnson didn't play this week. Chase Edmonds exited with a hamstring injury. The Cardinals play on Thursday hey. against the uh, halfway decent 49er defense. And so now there's concern that Chase Edmonds and David Johnson will be out on Thursday. I, In fact, I would go as far as to say I expect them to both be out. I agree. Yeah, David Johnson was expected to miss prior. He was uh, rumored to return after the short week against the 49ers and then we don't have an update on Chase Edmonds' hamstring, but when you pull a hamstring like that, you, you usually are going to miss a couple weeks. So now fantasy owners are stuck in this predicament of three rosterable options in Arizona at the running back position. Will uh, Kenyon Drake be startable? I, I think that there will be many a league in which Kenyon Drake will be started. This is an offense and an and, and an offense that has been utilizing the running back in a fashion that is valuable. This is a running back who fits that skill set, right? He's a great pass catcher. However, it's a horrifically bad matchup. I mean, not for Christian McCaffrey, but for most people, the uh, for for mere mortals, the San Francisco 49ers have been awesome. So it's it's really one of those like low end desperation flex plays that could turn out better than you hope, but you're not hoping for much. Yeah, and it's, it's just a half-year rental for Kenyon Drake, and then he'll be a free agent. Uh, Chase Edmonds, we mentioned the injury. Matt Breida, every week, yeah. suffered an ankle injury in the third quarter. Jeff Wilson, a head injury. It was a scary one in the second half. Nothing it, that Tevin Coleman and Raheem Mostert couldn't summon up. And yeah. this team is... Yeah, they're good. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Yeah, they, they miss Kyle Juszczyk, obviously, right? Yeah. I mean, man, they can run the ball. Brandon Cooks, another concussion. Yeah, this is not this is not good for Brady. He could Cook, miss man. next week for sure. Oh, I would could, imagine he, he will. could miss several weeks. Look at what happened to Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard had two quick uh consecutive concussions and now has missed the majority of the year because that's a serious thing. So yeah, I d- I don't expect Cooks to be back certainly not this week. You know, the these injuries are scary 
because we now have the benefit of this ultra slow motion. When you see players' eyes roll in the back of their head, yeah, that's just not. You know, it's just a quick, momentary thing sometimes. But man, that's a scary thing. Miles Sanders exited shoulder injury after a big touchdown run. Where are we at with Miles Sanders? Just waiting. Uh, in an infinite pool of sadness because I benched him. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and I lost because of it. Yeah, you, you you know, not to be outdone, Mike, you are in a sad place as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I like to let Jason collect his moping <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's spotlight. important to me. Thank you. Dede it's Westbrook, all I have left, Mike. His moping spotlight's all he has left in life. <laughs> it's a, it, like, it's just a black light, so you can't really see anything. No, nothing escapes your sadness. There's actually things you could see with a black light. Yeah, but thankfully they're not on me. <laughs> Talking about scorpions, of course. <laughs> exactly. Dee Dee Westbrook was active, but exited with a neck shoulder injury. Scorpions are scary. Yeah. Uh, Sam Darnold suffered a sprained thumb, stayed in the game. Things are not well in New York. No, they are not. And what's going on with Robbie Anderson? You expect him to be traded? There's whispers from the bushes now that the Patriots want another wide receiver. I think I've they, they wouldn't do it out of spite. There's they no way they would spite. trade him to the Patriots in division. Although I say that every time somebody trades someone to the Patriots. So I feel like everybody must start that conversation with the Patriots as, no, we're not interested, but somehow they end with... Okay, you get your way. <laughs> yeah, we, we would take a seventh rounder for him. I mean, at this point, if you're the Jets and you're you're not going to pay him... It's interesting. I don't know how he would work. I mean, it depends on the contract he signed. Let's say he goes to free agency, how it all factors into the extra picks that you get. But what if the Patriots are giving the best offer? The Packers should beat it. That's what should happen. The Packers are they are having a strong season, and they need help. And Devontae Adams will be back, but they need help outside of a random throw to Kumro here and a random throw to Lazard there. If I could pick a team that would benefit from Robbie Anderson, a young up-and-coming quarterback that could use a downfield threat, I would say the Jets look <laughs> like a really nice pair. So I would not trade him and just you know keep him for Sam Darnold. Don't be uh, dumb. I don't think that – I don't think you can have confidence in Robbie Anderson. It doesn't mean you can't play him. But confidence, it comes with consistency. And you don't have consistency – at the quarterback position, with the offense, with what the Jets are doing right now. So, you know, you could do worse on a week-to-week -week basis. You've always got the chance for the big play. But much like Kenny Stills, if you don't get the big play, you could end up holding the bag. All right, and a reminder, Mark Walton. Uh, we should talk about him briefly. He is going to be the starting running back tonight for the Miami Dolphins against Pittsburgh. Oh, hey. I Somehow he has risen, much like you will one day, Jason. Someday, Jason will be back. For now, it's just me. <laughs> Mark Waltenberg himself. Uh, moving forward, I mean, it's hard to find running backs. Yeah. He's a starting Here's running one. back. Here's one. I found one. You know what's funny is, so Kenyon Drake leaves, and you go, okay, this is, the, you know, it's Mark Walton's season, right? But right. Um, you, you, you obviously temper that. It's the Miami Dolphins. They haven't had great success. But a lot of people are going to be scratching and clawing to get Mark Walton, and yet... Kalen Balazs is still there and now benefits from Kenyon Drake leaving as well and is also the goal line back. Now, I hate Ken Kalen Balazs as a talent. You really do. As a talent. Yeah, yeah. I just, I've never thought he's a good football player. And so it's one of those things where it's, it's really confusing because if you have to have two guys that are splitting the load, you usually want that goal line back, like similar to the Eagles where you've got Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders. Usually you want the goal line option in Howard so far this year. It'll be, though, how much does that split actually go to Balazs? Sure. He's, while he has been the goal line back, you're talking three carries, three carries, two carries the past three weeks. I think one of the big differences between the Eagles and the Dolphins is you expect the Eagles to have opportunities at or near the goal line, whereas you don't with the Dolphins. Sure. Yeah, and Balaj has scored in consecutive weeks, I believe. Yeah. Yes. yes. That, that's all he's done, though. Right, that's, because that's, that's, that's the only place they use him. All right, let's get into the studs. There was good stuff that happened this weekend. <laughs> this week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right. Deshaun Watson. Oh, my goodness. He's, he's pretty, so good. pretty good at football. 
He's so good. That play where he gets kicked in the face, spun around, kicked in the eyeball, and then just throws a touchdown. He's 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 unbelievable. I think watching Watson and Lamar Jackson navigate the pocket, navigate being tackled, move outside the pocket, running. Those are two players that like when you look at the evolution of Kyler Murray and his good games and bad games, that's the one thing that his small stature hurts him so bad. I mean, he goes down so quickly compared to Watson and Sean um, Lamar. Lamar and uh, JJ Watt. Obviously, sad news uh, yep. tore his his pec, I believe, and so he will miss the rest of the season. But with no JJ Watt, no Jadavian Clowney, this is not a scary defense anymore. The Houston Texans defense is a is a great matchup for your offense, but that also means that it's it's just all you know. Good news for Deshaun Watson and Hopkins, and, and I think Kenny Bills will get back on the horse. Had a couple starts of the week with big weeks. Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff. Stafford continues to pretty much eviscerate defenses, and I think you can count on him to continue to do so because he has great pass-catching weapons, and they don't have a running game. Right. They yeah, this don't offense, have, uh, they, They're they transitioning to giving him more control. It's It's so wild what has happened. For, for Matt Stafford, which, I mean, just the return is awesome to see, but with a, a an offense that's led by Matt Patricia and Bevel, I mean, this is not what any of us expected for, for Matt Stafford to be the guy who's going downfield more than any other quarterback in the league. It, it felt like this entire game, every shot was just this bomb. You know, it was like, oh, Matthew Stafford going deep, and he's got – He's got multiple weapons yeah. that can that can break loose. So yeah, he's he's uh he's a guy that I think is just going to keep having great games at least next week at Oakland. And this was a game where Trey Carson had twelve carries, Ty Johnson at seven. Tra la la. <laughs> yeah, they the running back and Paul Perkins got in there too. Like the, the way that they distributed the carries was not very much the we're going to have Ty Johnson and J.D. McKissick split the load. No, but it, we, man, weapons. Galladay and Marvin Jones are red zone beasts. Galladay can get deep. Marvin Hall can get deep. Hawkinson's huge. Yeah. Danny Amendola is perfect underneath. Like this team. you They're interesting. You should hang on to Matthew Stafford right now. I agree. He gets to play Oakland next week too. Yeah, and then, uh, then it's Chicago and Dallas. Uh, Gardner Minshew, huge game for Gardner Minshew. Oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, Drew Brees came back. Big game for him. What was that? That uh, was a sl He's I, mad at Gardner for I hurting played, him personally. I played against Gardner. Yeah. So so he has no objectivity here. It is just pure nope. and utter physical I, pain. Foot Clan, I'm here today for myself. Sometimes you got to vent and let Goodness. it out. I recommend not to bottle things up too much. Aaron Rodgers getting it done. Yeah. He's the quarterback four on the season now. And he is playing like Aaron Rodgers again. It's been It's been a hot minute. Since we have seen Aaron Rodgers look like one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Should get Devontae but, Adams back next week. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard not to be bought in. Yeah. Gets the Chargers, gets Carolina. I mean, Rodgers is going to continue to be great. And I agree with you. He's looked the he's looked the part. The the roll out deep pass. Now, was he throwing with, that ball away? That's what I thought. He was, I thought he was, he but, was throwing that ball away. But here's away. the thing. He was throwing the ball away. But then it was like, oh, no, Jamal Williams is playing against Jason. <laughs> so he's got to be there so to catch a the, touchdown. The angels in yes, the end zone. The, the angels up. in the end zone. Great they, movie. They slowed the ball down just enough. I, I will say I 100%, along with Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth, thought that that was a throwaway. Yeah. I thought I 100%. That he, was a throwaway. If you watch the replay, Jamal Williams wasn't on the field. And then, <laughs> and then boom, he's there. It's pretty wild, man. <laughs> they restriped the end zone an extra two yards in yes. each direction while the ball was in the air. I just couldn't believe that. I was like, of course. <laughs> All right. If I told you Tevin Coleman had uh, 13 total touches, I think you'd be surprised that he ended up with over 100 yards and four touchdowns, and he could have had more. They just started spreading the ball around at the end of this game. Tevin Coleman. Yes. Running back eight on the year despite the missed time. Yeah, four touchdowns will do that. But I, I, he is here to stay. Yeah, I mean, yes. the, the the thing that is the cog uh, is the Kyle Shanahan 49ers run game is going to be great. That's just a guarantee. So whoever it is, because these guys all tend to get injured a lot. I mean, 
There, there's nobody yeah, there. That's, I mean, Coleman as well. Burita, most are they, they're all injured quite often. So whoever is active, just put them in. Put them in your lineup. Such a wild place to be here, man. Of the the, the off season of Tevin Coleman, or it's the past couple of years, stashing him in dynasty leagues because it's he's going to be freed. He's going to go to a team. It's going to be awesome. Gets basically offered garbage money if in the free market to go be for San Francisco. Everybody is sad that Tevin Coleman went to San Francisco and now you're sad if you don't have and Tevin Coleman. And then Tevin Coleman gets to play Arizona. Let me check oh this. Two goodness. times in the next 3 weeks, including Thursday. <sighs> yeah. Oh, so. that's going to be spooky. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you want to go see uh, these the guys, spooktacular it, the spooktacular happen in person uh, Thursday if you're in Arizona or any game wherever you are you want to check out the game in person use SeatGeek to get your tickets it's what we have always used since we started this show longtime partner with SeatGeek millions of live event tickets from sports to music to comedy we get we, you know when we go to Gaff again yep. we go on SeatGeek and we look it up. There's no wonder that SeatGeek has over 50,000 five-star reviews. It pulls in a bunch of tickets. It rates every ticket 1 through 10, shows nice graphic green big circles for the best deals, makes it quick and easy to pick it out, get a great seat. They, their maps of all the venues are really, really nice. So you can tell exactly where you're going to see, uh, you know, get the best price, and you can be sure that you're getting a great price because they bring in so many different uh, places that are, you know, they're pooling in tickets from everywhere. Uh, look, SeatGeek will even give you $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you need to do is use our promo code. <clears throat> wow. Download the SeatGeek app today and use the promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase. That's promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase. We'd like to thank Quip for sponsoring today's show. Quip it! <laughs> quip it good. Look, you've got to help out your teeth. Quip it, quip. As much uh, the, the cool things that your teeth do, they, they can't, nom, 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 they nom, can't nom. brush themselves. And if you're not brushing your teeth, you're not taking care of them. Brush if you teeth. ask a dentist what's the most important thing about a toothbrush, they will tell you. It's how you use it. And that's why you need a quip. Quip sensitive vibrations with a built-in timer. Guide gentle brushing for the dentist recommended two minutes. There's no guesswork when you have the Quip. It lets you know if you've been brushing long enough. The 30-second pulses ensure an even clean, and Quip automatically delivers brush heads to you every three months with clean new bristles right on schedule. You don't have to think about your toothbrush anymore because Quip does all the thinking. I love my Quip. I've been talking about them for years. I've been using it for years, and it's still fantastic. Quip starts at just $25, and you'll get your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers. This is a simple way to support the show and start brushing better, but you have to go to getquip.com slash footballers to get your first refill free. All right, I want to talk about Aaron Jones because he was an absolute beast last night. He even came off the field briefly with an injury. Didn't stop him from 220 total yards. He leads the NFL with 11 total touchdowns. And I think the biggest difference that you've seen, like we, we sit here on the show and we talk about fantasy football and we get frustrated with coaches who seem to prioritize giving the ball to players that are not at the talent level of other players. I think the biggest difference in Green Bay this year is if you're going to go down, go down with your stars. Yeah. Get them the ball. Get Aaron Jones the ball in the passing game. Get it to him on the outside. Let him do something. Last year, he had 26 receptions on the whole season. Through eight weeks in 2019, he has 34. He has 42 targets already this year. He had 35 all last year. If you are throwing the ball to Aaron Jones, goodness, excuse me, I, I'm dying from the inside out, so you understand. <laughs> if you're throwing the ball to Aaron Jones, you're going to succeed. Because he's electric. He's he's an Alvin Kamara type of guy. And so th th linebackers cannot guard him. Right. So this was one of those narratives before the season where it was a lot of talk about getting Aaron Jones th more involved in the passing game. That was what we were looking for in preseason. Week one, really focused on it. it it's definitely happened. And it's not going to – I mean, it's not one of those things where I think 
if they continue to utilize him in the passing game, that he's all of a sudden not going to be good. He's just going to keep being great if he's utilized in the passing game. Well, and it's no longer a binary situation with Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones because of the passing game work. You know, what do you want to do on offense, uh, Matt LaFleur? Do you want to give the ball more targets to Jake Kumaro or more targets to Aaron Jones and let him do something in the running game or, you know, in space? Jamal Williams had a great game as well. Scored twice, mm. 10 touches. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's the far more unpredictable asset in the yes. backfield, but he will get work. And if the offense continues to move the ball, both players will have a chance to succeed. What's Mike McCarthy thinking right now? <laughs> What's he thinking right now? Watch it. Like, is he, does he have the Jeff Fisher thought? Like, well, I, I built this team. That's why it's so good. Probably. Yeah, of course yeah. he does. <laughs> We're all humans. And you're, to be a head coach, your ego's like, got to be big. Hey, McCarthy, this is what happens when you use Aaron Jones. Yeah, and, you know. You'd still have a job. It's probably true. Latavius Murray. Oh, okay. Hmm. Nine for 55 <laughs> and a touchdown. Also played against Jason. 21 for 101 and one on look, the ground. Look, I, I know this is, everyone's sick of it. But three of the top four running backs, Tevin Coleman, Jamal Williams, and Latavius Murray. Those are my opponent's running backs. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. <laughs> Latavius Murray forced uh, in your honor, Jason, the most missed tackles amongst running backs in week eight. If you watch that game, he never went down on first contact. He was constantly picking up an extra two or three yards. He looked great. He did. The what Arizona you, Cardinals will help that to be a reality. What do you do with Latavius Murray right now? Because if you try to sell him to the Camaro owner, you probably don't get a premium on him. Because you, you can't. Is it, is it worth like, holding him just in the event that Camaro goes down and you know you have a top five guy? It could be, but he's they're going into the bye week I'm talking about the Saints, so he can't play for you next week. Alvin Camara, the way they were talking about his injury, they were saying if this were the playoffs, like he'd be it. So it was just them looking at the schedule and the bye week coming up saying, well, let's get Camara two weeks of rest. So I would try, if you try to trade him to the Camara owner, if saying, look how valuable Latavius Murray is to your team. If if Kamara goes down, you're going to want to have Murray. So I would prefer to go get that value than hold on to him and see if, if Kamara's right because I think Kamara will be back. All right, Cook, McCaffrey, Barkley, the big guys, they did big things this week. Let's talk about David Mopportunity, mm. his breakout performance, 27 carries, 135 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Oh, the overcorrection. <laughs> That's coming? No, that the, happened. It was. Of, of oh, Matt yeah. Nagy having him touch the ball what, like five times last week. I mean, what happens, the situation you were in with David Montgomery before was that the touches were so limited that you just lowered the probability of a big play. And if you got a game without a big play, you're done. I mean, you get eight points, three points. You know, last week was the nightmare. Now, Jason, you said it. Um, on the show last week, you said it on the Sirius XM show, specifically second half MVP candidates. David Montgomery was in that category for you, and that was a, a risky thing to say after a two-carry week. Yeah, and it, I mean, you knew there was going to be an overcorrection as far as carry count goes. Obviously, they ended up losing the game, just which just, just, they should not have, but they did. Um, but yeah, I mean, David Montgomery is going to be <laughs> involved far more the second half of the season than he was the first half. And if you want to find somebody to hang out with today, Jay, yeah, it, Matt, Matt Nagy would be the guy that you could hang with. Oh, man, I don't Because if I you want, want to know to. about anybody more dead inside right now <laughs> than you, I think Matt Nagy's the one. But I haven't made like that's not fair because that, you feel like yeah, he so made his own grave. He dug his made own grave. his grave. He did. I, I've, I've my guys have been great. My team's been awesome. Not like he rolled around in the not awesome enough. Yes, I agree. He's rolling around in the Ebola, and he's like, wait a minute. What? How would I get this Ebola? I don't recommend that. I think that's a bad... I don't either. And so, make, yes. Make good decisions. Don't, yep. don't be a naggy. Philadelphia, Detroit, the Rams. Those are not ideal matchups, I think, for Montgomery. But if he gets that kind of work, it's going to be flex-worthy. Miles Sanders, Jordan Howard. Howard has a real opportunity here yeah. 
uh, going up against Chicago, then the bye week. But if Miles Sanders misses a week, he could be alone in that backfield. Him and Boston Scott. Oh, is this a revenge game too? Yeah. Dun, dun. Oh, oh, revenge against Nagy too. Yes. Take that. Trade me away. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be now, pretty nice for Jordan Howard next week against Chicago at home. I do feel the need to apologize a little bit to Matt Nagy. But he is not, he's not without blame. But, like, I don't know what I would do if Mitch Trubisky was my quarterback. <laughs> I don't know what I would do. I would do this. I would give David Montgomery the ball 27 times. Once sure. again. And just cross my fingers. David, uh, Mitch Trubisky, atrocious, managed to lead another comeback drive down the field. And then Matt Nagy chose to take a knee and let his kicker. I couldn't that's, believe I, that's And true. then defended it in the press conference with some real vitriol oh, about how it wasn't even a consideration to run the ball there. Well, then you're an idiot. Okay, I take everything back. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. They're He's, both bad. This is a match made in heaven. You two deserve each other. Mitchell and <laughs> Mitchell. <laughs> Mitchell and Matt. Mitchell and Nagy. And I'll try. All right. Wide receivers. Wide receivers. Mike Evans, another monster game. 11 for 198 and 2. Cooper Cup is ridiculous. Seven for two twenty and two one. Two twenty. Yeah. Two hundred and twenty yards, and he could have had another hundred if they needed it. Yes. Kenny Galladay. Mm. Oh, he was so smooth. So busting out them smooth, smooth routes. Start of the week. Smooth. Julian Edelman, two touchdowns. Michael Thomas is Michael Thomas. Patrick Peterson couldn't do anything to stop him. Yeah, which man, I. Some people on Twitter were breaking down the defense that Patrick Peterson was being asked to play against Michael Thomas. It was not Patrick Peterson's fault. Yeah, he wasn't one-on-one -on, -one on him very often. And he was always giving him cushion. I don't, that's a tale for another podcast. All right. Um, Julio and Hopkins, they both got it done without a touchdown. It's nice to see these the big-name guys, Mike Evans, Cooper Cup, Julio, uh, Hopkins, the the guys that you expect gig, big games from. There's been so many weeks where they've just crapped all over your team. It's it's so nice, and and same with running backs. You know the Saquon Zeke's. It's this was a nice week for all of the the real studly players. Yeah, the chalk, yeah, the chalk kind of worked. Tyra Williams, when he plays, seems to score touchdowns. He was yes. three for ninety one on a touchdown. He's back. DJ hmm. Chark here to stay. Six for seventy nine and a touchdown. Chris Conley, I want to bring him up. Four for one hundred three and one on seven targets couple of weeks in a row where he's had some big plays. If D.D. Westbrook misses time, are you flexing Conley into lineups? It's tough because mm. I wasn't really flexing D.D. into the lineup. I mean, in a pinch, you could. Got Obviously, the, on the docket. The last two weeks. Well, that that's a really good matchup. Maybe maybe on, on a one-week basis, you could look that way. Gardner's been very steady. Um, top 12 quarterback two weeks in a row for fantasy. And Chris Conley is a... You know, if you're not familiar with him, he's an athletic freak. Yeah. So he topped 21 miles an hour on that touchdown down the sideline. DK Metcalf, two touchdowns on three catches for 13 yards. <laughs> but that's what you get with a beast of a man. Yes. Start of the week. Ryan Griffin and Darren Fells, two touchdowns each. I like how Brooks put in the show doc. Chris Hearn, uh, Ryan Griffin, I mean. Yeah, I was tilting. So, very, very much watching the Ryan Griffin success. Does it make you feel confident in Herndon when he returns? I already was confident yeah. in Herndon when he returns, but this is great. I mean, we've talked about how Ryan Griffin has been out on the field. He's been running the routes. He's just Ryan Griffin. But this game, apparently, he was like, I'm not Ryan Griffin. <laughs> I, I, I could knee a guy in the face when I go oh, in for a man. touchdown. If you have not seen the I Griffin. haven't seen what you're talking about. Oh, he does a full flying jump knee. <laughs> like right as he's going in the end zone, guy goes to tackle him. It's almost like one of those hurdles that turn into like the the kick, like uh, Antonio Brown had a while back. Darren Fells, interested moving forward. He's a couple he, weeks now where he's he's been. You can stream him in a pinch, but his floor is zero. Yes, yep. his floor is absolutely zero. But this is his third game with a touchdown, his second game with multiple touchdowns. So at least you know the upside yeah, well, can't exist. Well, Fuller's out. I mean, for sure. a, a period of time and, and stills didn't get the targets that you might have hoped. Jonah Smith, six oh. for 78 and a touchdown. Ooh. Jason's start of the week. <laughs> yeah. Seven targets. He's look, he's look great without Walker. I mean, in, in the games, at, you know, after his rookie season, well, when he doesn't have Walker, he's been pretty much a top. No, no, no. Yes. No. no. Last year, Walker was out the entire year and Jonah Smith gave you like two S or three games that mattered. He get, Well, he gave you six 
his first six games were all top 12 at tight end when Delaney Walker was out. There's a lot of reasons, though, last year. I mean, people expected breakout last season. All I'm saying, I'm not saying you can't start him, but he disappeared. I like him with Tannehill. Last year, you had a, he has you had a, a Mariota, quarterback. You had a Mariota problem. And he's 24 years old, and you know he, he was drafted to be – like when he was coming out, I love Jonu Smith. And I thought the future, he'll be, he'll be bright. We always forget, you know, with these Gerald Everett's and Jody right. Smith, like tight ends take several years to develop and, and come into their own. And very often it can, you can just be sitting there watching the paint dry and just nothing, nothing, nothing. Then just one game, something clicks, and now they're a pass-catching weapon. The nice thing about Jody Smith is his speed and athleticism and the ability to make, like he's a yardage guy. You go play Cameron Bray. You have to get yep. mm -hmm. a touchdown or you're dead. It's one of the reasons why I went Joni over break this week is I figured if, if Joni doesn't score, you might get the other part of this line, six for 78. That would make you happy all by itself. It's like a George Kittle, yes. Travis Kelsey. Like They're hard to tackle. You get them the ball, and they're probably getting another 10 or 12 yards on every reception. Austin Hooper doing Hooper things. You know, Austin Hooper was great. Julio Jones was great with Matt Shaw. <clears throat> yeah. All the fears of Matt Schaub starting uh, assuaged. Tyler Eifert, six for 74 on nine Yay! targets. Just a. He got injured. <laughs> he did. I mean, Come on. It Eifert. was a very Tyler Eifert event. Oh. His best days are behind him. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. What's happening with Kyler Murray, Mike? You've got two weeks in a row where Larry Fitzgerald's barely involved in the offense. Cardinals had the great matchup against New York last week. The Giants, did he did nothing. Zero touchdowns in the last eight quarters. What do fantasy owners do with Kyler Murray? You, man, at this point, you have to at least panic a little bit because two of the next three weeks, San Francisco. And the San Francisco defense is fully legit. They are a, a great team. Now, he gets... The Tampa Bay Buccaneers sandwiched there, so he... It's a delicious sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> Just doesn't have the right well, bread. Like the, the, yeah, it's it's like rye bread. It's terrible. Ruined You're not sandwiches. A, you've publicly proclaimed your hatred yeah. of rye bread. Well, I don't understand why people like it. But it's, what's your favorite meat? Ooh, uh, I don't know. It's like a like pastrami? Like a Roast good beef? pastrami. Okay, oh, so pastrami, this is a pastrami yeah. on rye. Yeah. Okay. This is, this is a... This is a terrible and situation. You're, and you're keto, so you would just take the rye, <laughs> throw them away, and eat that pastrami. That is 100% correct. That's what Kyler Murray is. That's what I was going to ask you. If you would, if you were fed that, like handed that sandwich, you would actually just peel the pastrami off of it? Yes, 100%. So that's what you should do here? Yes, and you're going to be streaming next week. Then you can play Kyler, and then you'll want to stream again. Man. Now, is it worth uh, – we got we to ask because I think people are going to face this decision themselves – is it worth dropping him? Because I want to hold him. But over the next month, you're you're presuming that there's only one game that you really want to start him, which is uh, not, not this coming week, but the following week at Tampa Bay, the sandwich of the two San Francisco games, and then it's the bye week. So do you hold on to him for the hope that, you know, after no. the bye, you've got the Rams, you've got the Man. Steelers not good? No, no you don't. And, and here's the problem. One of the big differences over the last two weeks is no David Johnson. David Johnson – represented a lot of yardage for Kyler Murray. Mm. Dump off passes. You're underestimating how large the Grand Canyon is. You're oh, trying, that, you're oh, trying that one out. trying that on for size. Canyon yeah. Drake in Arizona. The, the no, no, no. We, we, we certainly understand. The Grand Canyon. Well, we need to make sure that the, the, the national audience understands. So the Grand Canyon. Well, we'll see. That was, a, that was a reference to the Grand Canyon. Yes. Maybe right. maybe he helps Kyler out. I highly doubt it. <laughs> Your point is well taken. See, Without the hard the hard part about this is yes, the Grand Canyon's one of the, one of the wonders of the world. Are there seven it's, or eight wonders? I, 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 that's why I didn't throw out a number. I'm looking at the producers. How many wonders I are there? I thought it was seven. I think Th it was throw seven. up some fingers. Seven one. Okay, this is seven. So do we lose one? I think there are two different wonders. There's like the yeah. There's those, natural and man made. Right. No, there's ancient and yes. and, and and current. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Regardless, it's it's inc <laughs> it's incredible. It's beautiful, but it's also a, a big hole. Like, is, is that what? I, are you comparing fantasy value to a big hole? I'm consider. I'm. I, Kenyon Drake has been a big hole of fantasy yes. value for quite some time. I still love him. So, what better state to go to? 
We are lost. All right, Lev Bell, what do you make of this hugely disappointing performance? This stat is unbelievable. Since 2000, there have been – since the year 2000, there have been 211. Remember that number. There have been 211 running backs that have averaged 20-plus touches in their team's first seven games. Lev Bell ranks 203rd in fantasy points. I mean, he is not getting it done at all. I would go trade for him on the cheap. That's exactly what I think. I, I mean, if I'm, you have him, hold on, uh, take a take a bath, take a shower, get it, get the cries out, and then play Le'Veon Bell with this juicy schedule coming up. Do you disagree, Andy? Do you, uh, do you think this is he's he's done? He's kaput. No, I don't disagree at all. I would try to acquire him as well. I he's averaging point four eight fantasy points per touch. That is really really bad. But you haven't played the majority of this season with Sam Darnold. When you came back with Sam Darnold, it was against the Patriots. Yeah, you, you had no quarterback. You this game was against, disappointing, though. Just yes, flat out yes, disappointing. 100%. This one was the, is the one that's going to get you the ability to get him cheap. But he's played Buffalo, New England, twice, Philly. The, tough matchups with backups. Now from here on out, Why Miami, won't Sam Darnold take the, the easy points? Why won't he take the easy points on the outside? That's what I – when I watched that game – it's like the Matt Nagy situation, or you know, with Tr Mitch Trubisky. Well, it's because every time he Lev Bell's right there, just throw him the ball. But when he looks at Lev Bell, he does a quick glance to the coach, and he gets the gaze of the beehole. And we've talked oh, about this. Oh gosh, those. stay away from that. <laughs> and, and he says, "Don't you dare, you throw that ball down the field." Now, you said the gaze, but was was that a known pun while you were making it it was Adam unknown Gaze? but i love it <laughs> that's fantastic work <laughs> what do fantasy owners do with the detroit backfield other than sob run away so ty johnson are you out yes. after one game i uh, i'm not I, oh, majority I'm of snap so ty johnson was 39.7 percent mckissick was 25.4 percent and then uh what do we have carson at 30 percent yep i'm out i i'm not out in the sense that i i wouldn't be dropping uh, Ty Johnson this week. I mean, I, I still want to hold on and see how it th – this was, you know, they were thrust into this situation. I, so I'm not going to – you know, if he was dropped on waivers, I'd still pick him up. That doesn't mean I would play him, but I think he is going to be the starting running back for an offense that I think is good. So we'll, we'll see. I'm getting tired of waiting for this next player. Mm -hmm. And his name's Robert Woods. Mm. And I don't – I it's not going the right direction. The last three games for Robert Woods, four targets, no receptions. Seven targets, five receptions. Two targets, two receptions. Man. We're talking every week about Cooper Cup, 200-yard games, monster target numbers. Here's Robert Woods, two for 36. In a game they dominated. What do you I – mean, Josh Reynolds caught a touchdown. What do you do with Robert Woods? Are you – I mean, is this full-on bust declaration through eight weeks? Through eight weeks, he has he has been yeah. I mean, I no I would, receiving touchdowns. Yeah, I would say through eight weeks, he's been a massive disappointment to the level that you you could you could throw the the word bust out there. He's on pace right now for nine hundred and forty two yards, Ugh. and obviously no no receiving touchdowns since he he doesn't have any. That's not what we were hoping for at all. Certainly not what I was hoping for. Not what I was expecting. I still believe, like. To me, I don't think this is the new Robert Woods, that he's going to never score touchdowns and not be targeted. Um, especially, we don't know what's going on with Brandon Cooks and how much time he's going to miss. So Now, they do have the bye week coming up. So, that will help Brandon Cooks. True. True. So, you know, yeah, you're, you're certainly disappointed, but what are you going to do? I mean, maybe you move him to the position on your roster where you're completely willing to bench him, put in – you know, a Robbie Anderson over him and take a shot until things turn around. But I don't think you could trade him for anything. I certainly don't believe you could or should cut him. I think... No, I think it's about appropriating value differently in your brain so that you're willing to, you know, flex a better Marvin Jones matchup versus a... Robert Woods is in there every week. It's just... It just sucks. Yeah. Odell Beckham Jr., Five for 52 on seven targets against the, you know, he plays for the Cleveland Nick Chubbs. <laughs> is he broken too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Odell Beckham, th this is, uh, we talked about him in depth. I'm five for 52. I, I know he's, this, that's considered a bad week. 
against the Patriots, I don't think that's terrible. If you were playing him, you were hoping, certainly hoping for more, but I'll take the five for 52. You get, they get Denver next week. Is he a wide receiver two to you? Yeah. Yeah, you have to downgrade him. T.Y. Hilton, two for 54 on six targets. Was covered by Chris Harris all game long. Has Pittsburgh, Miami, Jacksonville coming up. Off yeah. game for Hilton. Super off game, and he had a, a, a relatively – long bomb right at the end of the yeah. game that was quite the comeback by Jacoby Brissett yes after a rough game Chris Godwin four for 43 on eight targets disappointing week more stinkers Terry McLaurin Larry Fitzgerald you know Keenan Allen's in here as a stinker I think that's I mean fighting through injury for eight targets seven catches 53 yards against Chicago again you know 68 percent of snaps that's a pretty good game for the workload he got Big disappointment, Kenny Bills. Yeah. I'm not playing that drop for him until he does something. Th this is what I'm talking about. This this is this is the least stinky week we've had. Right? Lev Bell, Robert Woods, Odell Beckham. But like these aren't these aren't massive massive busts from the stars. I'm proud of I'm proud of the NFL this week. Oh. I just want to say National Football League, like, good job, man. Good good work this week. Kenny Stills was on the field ninety six point. Uh, four percent of snaps. He ran forty-six routes, both identical to DeAndre Hopkins. But I saw him have a drop. He just seemed to not be involved. It's disappointing. It is disappointing. I would still be willing to play him as with the same expectation. He's got Jacksonville. Obviously, having DeAndre Hopkins means you're never, ever, ever going to see the toughest opponent across the field. And, you know, Kenny Stills, very similar to Will Fuller, is a boom-bust player, right? You're you're going to have to take the the bad games in right. order to get the big blow-up games. The bad with the bad for Kenny Stills. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could make the argument that, look, Will Fuller was bad six out of seven games, and now he's inheriting that role, which is not – maybe it's just not that good. Kiki QT getting the bench, all that preseason hype. All the injuries, they added up to depth chart change. Tight end stinkers. Zachary Ertz. Jason takes a deep breath. Yeah. He uh, looks longingly into the sky, remembering the trade he made to acquire Zach Ertz in our league of record. Yeah, it's it's not been great. Another Goddard touchdown. This is what we were talking about is the real – upside that has been taken away from Zach Ertz is the touchdown opportunities because the truth is other teams are still focused on Zach Ertz because he is you know the the primary target or a primary target for the Eagles and that's where they can sneak out I mean they're smart the, you know this is, a, this is an intelligent offense and they know that they're going to be able to get Dallas Goddard open in the end zone easier than they can get Zach Ertz open in the end zone and until defenses flip the upside for Zach Ertz is really limited. And the targets, I mean, four targets this game? Gross. The worry is real, Mike? Oh, yes. Yeah, I've, I've, I talked about my concern weeks ago for, for Zach Ertz. Of, you can still play him two for 20. That sucks. But the yardage has been there. The touchdowns are not there for Zach Ertz. He's still a weekly play. But a guy you drafted as the, the third or the fourth tight end off the board in the early rounds – you got to change how you think about it. So he has, he has Chicago, a bye week in New England. Are you, if you own Zach Ertz, are you looking towards streaming options and considering them? No. Mm -mm. No, I'll still play Ertz. The yeah. other, I mean, when you're talking about streaming right now, there aren't great options out there. Now, maybe your league didn't pick up Jonu Smith. That's the only name that I could think of that might be out there. Maybe you want to pick him up for the upcoming bye week in hopes that Delaney Walker continues missing time. But outside of that, I mean, there just aren't really streamable options out on waivers that would ever be good enough. Like you, you can, you can look at some matchups, look at a good opponent and say, okay, I'm going to play this guy. Cause I think he's got the best chance at a touchdown, but to play that guy over Zach Ertz, I, I just can't imagine doing that. All right. Some other sinkers at the tight end position. Hunter Henry didn't have a big game. Greg Olson two for 13. Gerald Everett, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. and saw the snaps deplete, which is very bizarre. Forty-eight percent. That's not good. No, I, like when Brandon Cooks 
it went out right at the very beginning of the game. It seemed like, okay, Gerald Everett will get involved, but then it was Josh Reynolds' time. Jimmy Graham, only three for 20 on five targets, but he had one target that I couldn't, I just couldn't believe. Down the right sideline, full sprint, nine route, bomb. And this wasn't like a Hail Mary. This was just, that was the play they called. And I was like, wait, who's 80? Wait, that's Jimmy Graham. Why is he, why is he trying? And go, go figure, the ball was overthrown. Because <laughs> it's like. <laughs> he, he, would, he did he, have him beat. He, he had the defender beat. I mean, sure. The ball, ball could have dropped into his hands there, and that would have been a big game. But it but. was – it was. I guess it's a, you should say it's impressive to see and good for fantasy owners that have to start, Graham. But also I was surprised. Well, we, that was the Angels in the um, – In the end zone? In the, the end Angels zone. in the end zone were like, wait, are, is, uh, is Jason going up against Jimmy Graham? No. All right, slow him down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Blow it away. Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. I have one other player I want to ask you about before we close this thing out. Excellent. Devin Singletary. Oh, yeah. Talk to me about Devin Singletary. He had a touchdown reception in this game. But when Frank Gore lingers in the doorway, does he have hope over the second half? I mean, we talked a lot about David Montgomery. Does I, Devin Singletary have a second half opportunity here? We've talked about the Bills' he certainly, schedule. He certainly does, but nine opportunities, three rushes, six targets he if he didn't get the touchdown you're we're not even having this discussion he's an interesting player his ceiling is capped by frank gore continuing to be frank gore. i'm in i mean, I, I think I'm, he should be on your bench but montgomery or singletary rest of the season montgomery oh, i would go montgomery because of literally his namesake the opportunity that yeah. he has is greater than the opportunity that you know singletary has but if you look at what Singletary did through, you know, the year, he was he was more involved as the year went in. Last week, thirty three percent snaps. This last week, sixty eight percent of snaps. They're going to get him more involved. And we talked about the schedule coming up. You know, the Washington Redskins, the Browns, Dolphins. Nice. Yeah, I, I think Singletary is a guy that, uh, you know, I'd, I'd much rather have Singletary and his poor opportunity than mm, okay. Mark Walton. Who oh, is yeah, going to be yeah. the starter sure. for a bad Dolphins team? If you play in a keeper league and you're navigating the trade deadline, keep guys like Devin Singletary and David Montgomery in in your mind, because maybe two or three, four player keeper leagues. I traded Alshon Jeffrey for Devin Singletary in one of our keeper leagues, just in case Singletary breaks out over the back half. Those are the type of young players that you can pick up on the cheap. And uh, may provide opportunities as a keeper. Should I be reacting to your yeah, face, well, I Jason? Got, I got the sucky, You're... sucky, suck, suck. Breaking news. It's not okay. fantasy. It is fantasy relevant because I've been telling everybody oh, out okay. there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> breaking news. It's fair. So the last couple of weeks, I've been telling everybody, and I have been doing this. Brooks can attest how I was adamant when we were talking waiver wires because he's the co-owner. I, I, I should really, Brooks. How are you doing? With all of our yeah. bad beats, because you are a part of this team. I, I'm fine, man. Yeah, you've got a stronger will than man, I. Man, he does not care about your team at all. <laughs> he, does not. Well, he, he always tells me, he's like, it's, this is Jason's fault. Right, it was. Um, but uh, I've been telling everybody to pick up the Jets' defense. Their schedule is awesome. They're going to be a Patriots light. Um, and unfortunately, C.J. Mosley w has got re-injured and is going to be out several weeks. And now the breaking news is that the Jets traded Leonard Williams to the Giants' Uh, so the defense that I, you know, we really want to stream on all these great matchups crumbling. Yeah. They're losing two of their best players. It stinks. Yeah. Yeah. And then Sam Darnold, a little loose with the football short fields for the opposition. A little bit scary. Want to thank today's studio sponsor, pristine auction. Nice pick here, Brooks. A David Montgomery signed mini helmet bears helmet. $33 yesterday at pristine auction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS, Ballers. at pristineauction.com to browse hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Every single one of them authentically certified autographs. Browse your favorite team. We'll be back tomorrow with some waiver wire picks. We'll try to piece Jason back together. Hopefully you're like Humpty Monday Dumpty night goes over well. here. I know it. Take care. See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.